there are a lot of Ukrainian artists who are simply stolen, uh, whose names uh, are appropriated as Russian. And uh, it's not uh, something new that Russia wants uh, to steal our history, to destroy it. And plus, uh, very strongly pressed такою мистецькою пропагандою Росії, імперською пропагандою Росії, яка десятиліттями вливала величезні гроші, в тому числі гроші їхнього Газпрому, на промоцію своїх імперських цінностей і свого імперського бачення культури. That we don't have Putin war, we have colonial war, which is actually very clear for us, but not clear for Western colleagues. Hello and welcome to Ukrainian Things, a special project by Ukraine Media Center and NGO Euro Atlantic Force. I'm your host, Varvara Shmigalyov. In today's episode, we'll talk about the decolonization of Ukrainian art. Russia, as a true empire, always aimed to destroy everything national, free, and different. It tried to annihilate everything it was not able to swallow, digest, and appropriate. And it kept doing it now, after 30 years since Ukraine officially became a sovereign country. The Ministry of Culture Information Policy of Ukraine has confirmed more than 550 episodes of war crimes committed by Russian troops against the cultural heritage of Ukraine. Among the damage in particular are 171 objects with the status of monuments, 146 objects of valuable historical buildings, 58 monuments and work of art that are not registered as monuments of cultural heritage, and 44 museums. If you want to find out more about this subject, Please continue watching this video and subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss our videos in the future. Our first speaker is Ksenia Litvinenko, an art scholar who is currently conducting research in Bratislava regarding the comparison of Ukrainian and Slovak art during the First World War. I've asked her how perception of the domestic and international audience changed after the start of Russia's full-scale invasion. I think that the main point is uh, the great interest uh, to Ukrainian art in Ukraine and abroad, uh, because um, in European countries uh, people don't know and even scientists don't know much uh, about Ukrainian culture, about Ukrainian art in 20th century, for example, and uh, if uh, Russian avant-garde is quite famous, uh, all over the world, and it's just a great phenomena. But uh, no, uh, nobody knows uh, that there are a lot of Ukrainian artists who are simply uh, stolen, uh, whose names uh, are appropriated as Russian. And uh, it's not uh, something new that Russia wants uh, to stole our history, to destroy it, uh, to, to, to destroy everything it, uh, which is just national and, uh, and free. Yes, uh, they were totalitarian empire when it was Russian empire and it was when it was Soviet Union. And uh, we have um, difficult history a century ago and uh, long ago. Uh, so it's our aim to talk about it now because it's a great interest and uh, we have the opportunity. And uh, art is also a chance to uh, attract uh, interest of um, people who are in, not interested in war. I live now in Slovakia and I see that people, they don't know, they don't want to speak about war much more, so they are tired of it. Uh, but they are interested uh, in art, it's uh, always, yes. And we have the duty to translate uh, these researches which we have in Ukrainian uh, and about some phenomena which are famous in Ukraine, for example, uh, about Ukrainian art was that it was different from Russian, that we have different history, different art history, and we were uh, not under the pressure of uh, older brother, uh, but uh, older brother stole a lot of Ukrainian art and uh, it just manipulated history. Uh, we uh, now can tell the truth and it's important and is interesting and uh, it's uh, on time now. So I think it's the main, the, the main duty of all Ukrainians. Uh, and people in Ukraine uh, which, uh, who, were, who were never interested in art history, uh, they now are um, 
uh, interested in uh, to 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 look deeply uh, in our roots and uh, to feel stronger that we have old uh, history. It's just our basis and it helps us to struggle, uh, to feel self-confident and uh, to feel that we uh, not want to be a part of European context in art also. We wear the part of this context. Uh, we have these names as, for example, Kazimir Malevich, who is Ukrainian originally. He, uh, he was born in Kiev and no, no, not Russian, Polish, but Ukrainian, Polish artist. It, uh, the name uh, famous in all the world. And uh, Sonia de Luna, uh, Alexandra Exter, we have also the uh, phenomena of executed renaissance uh, in the cities uh, when a lot of Ukrainian artists and poets, they were shot for their uh, values. And we, we see that cyclic history that in a century now we, we have the same but it's just new technologies and, uh, but uh, the idea and the ideology of the Russian empire are the same. So we, we have to speak about it in this art context. There are a lot of projects, uh, small projects now. There are a lot of scholarship uh, in different countries for Ukrainian artists, uh, a lot of residences uh, where Ukrainians uh, try to and try to use every opportunity uh, that we are modern nation. We have contemporary art uh, in the European level. And uh, for, for example, we have now open museums and uh, not a lot, but there are exhibitions which opened. Uh, and for example, Art Arsenal, one of the modern institutions uh, who continues uh, working during this time. And it's also a phenomenon for European countries that uh, there's no war, or all organizations are closed, but uh, all artists try to uh, do what they, what they can do in this, uh, in this atmosphere. Next, let's hear from Alessia Drashkava, artist editor-in-chief of YouTube. We've asked her, have the values of Ukrainian art changed and how have they changed during this terrible war? На мою думку, звісно, змінилося, і само мистецтво змінилося, але важливо це питання розглядати з внутрішнього та зовнішнього боку. Якщо говорити про бік внутрішній, то, напевно, більше українці, більш масово почали розуміти, що українське мистецтво, як і українська культура, українська історія, загалом є дуже важливою частиною нашої самоідентифікації і взагалі розуміння нашого минулого дуже важливе для розуміння нашого теперішнього та майбутнього. Це, звісно, базові речі, які багато митців та мисткинь руками доносили до українського суспільства, але зараз мені здається, що ми стали більш-менш більш почутими. Також дуже важливим моментом є те, що українське мистецтво і українська культура загалом завжди були частиною визвольного руху українців проти росіян в тому числі і руху за незалежність. І зараз наші митці та наші мисткині доносять, свідчать про злочини росіян так само, доносять правду про Україну і волонтерять. І деякі, і велика частина насправді захищають Україну зі зброєю в руках в тому числі. І це створює таку певну велику довіру до українського мистецтва серед українців, в тому числі, мені здається, що в цьому теж є важлива причина, що багато митців і мисткинь борються разом з нашими військовими, в тому числі. Говорячи про зовнішні українські, українську діяльність українського мистецтва. Мені дуже не подобається, коли називають це мистецький фронт, тому що все-таки Оксана Забушко права, що фронт у нас на даний момент мілітарний, і без цього мілітарного фронту ми не змогли б ні писати, ні малювати, ні знімати, ні що завгодно робити в нашій країні. Але певні місії мистецтво має виконувати і виконує. І тут дуже важлива є підбір образів і слів, а також гучність українського голосу. 
якраз Сергій Жадан нещодавно в своїй блискучій промові на врученні премії миру сказав, що українцям важко підбирати слова для аудиторії світової, тому що дуже багато слів зараз не доносять того, що звикли як ми звикли їх розуміти і наділяти, навіть слово «мир» для українців має зовсім інші значення, ніж слово «мир» для пересічних громадян, або для тих же українців 10 років тому. Так, і знаходити ці образи, знаходити слова, знаходити ці сенси, якими транслювати сьогодення Україну цю реальність – до західної аудиторії дуже важливо, а також гучність голосу, використовування великих площадок – непроста річ насправді, тому що ми знаємо, що мистецьке середовище, мистецький бомон насправді досить такий ну, як... важкий для змін, важке для змін середовища і плюс дуже сильно просякнуте такою мистецькою пропагандою Росії, імперською пропагандою Росії, яка десятиліттями вливала величезні гроші, в тому числі гроші там, їхнього Газпрому, на промоцію своїх імперських цінностей і свого імперського бачення культури, до якого ми знаємо анексовано дуже багато українських художників, дуже багато не тільки українських художників, а й художників інших е- окупованих в свій час Росією територій тощо. І зараз дуже важливо тобто, не тільки доносити правду про нашу війну, а ще українські митці стикаються з тим, що треба дуже багато переконувати західну аудиторію в тому, що багато речей, які вони звикли вважати правильними, такими аксіомними, вони є не такі, їх варто підвішувати і дивитись на них інколи і нашими очима. І це не проста задача, як мінімум, не проста. Але це, звісно ж, потрібно робити. And last but not least, let's hear from... Alistina Kahidze, Ukrainian artist, on her personal perception and experience of decolonization of Ukrainian art and her reflection on it through her own art and communication with the fellow artists. I was traveling so much this year during the Russian-Ukrainian war. I met so many people and it was absolutely clear that uh, many Ukrainian artists started to talk that we don't have Putin war, we have colonial war which is actually very clear for us, but not clear for Western colleagues. And those process of decolonization is actually needed to be done. And we try to do it in such a short term. And it's hard because uh, for many Western colleagues, it's not clear where Ukraine is. And just to give you a few examples, for instance, uh, main figure, Kazimir Malevich, he's so related to Ukrainian context and it's such a discovery and not clear question for many Western colleagues that he belongs to Kyiv so much, of course, to Russia as well. So it's one of the things. For instance, if you talk about scientist Vavilov, he also part of uh, Ukrainian context and not also clear. So uh, there are this uh, job to really talk about some personalities which are very important for world knowledge. They are Ukrainian, they were Ukrainian. Another thing, uh, people in the West, they really like can't uh, divide that Soviet Union also was um, somehow transformed uh, empire, which is, was um, demolished in 1991, but it's still as we can see It's not really yet, um, um, let's say, how to say even. It, it's, it still like exists, it's interesting. And if to talk about uh, the work of mine, I'm not a theoretician, but I remember when I was given a lecture in Warsaw, I was talking that if even to talk about my language, so my grandma, she spoke Ukrainian in Donbass, But my mom never spoke Ukrainian, but they all time lived together, my mom and my grandmother. And it's interesting that my mom died in 2019, and even I haven't asked her when she switched to Russian. Of course she did, because it's not possible that 
let's say my grandma could speak to her Russian because she didn't know this. And I remember this uh, story really like help to many of my friends in the West and even theoreticians to understand how complicated um, colonization story of Ukraine is. So it's really like so hard job and I'm not a theoretician, but it's still we need uh, somehow to um, accumulate uh, many um, methods. For instance, if I just told this story, it's like personal story. Sometimes it also does work. Or for instance, uh, I could just uh, talk that I grew up with in Russian culture and basically that we do know this Russian culture so much and how we can look on so many imperialistic pages in it. And it's again, this is huge uh, privilege that we really do know this language and we can help um, world community to understand this. And this um, work or this job is not so easy, I would say, and it doesn't work so quick because if um, we just imagine that people have to really like put many stereotypes on a site and it's uh, never so easy for anyone. You've been watching the special project by Ukraine Media Center and Euro-Atlantic Force dedicated to the Russian-Ukrainian war, Ukrainian flames. In the description under this video, you can find information on how you can help Ukraine fight Russian aggression. If you find our work useful, please like and share this video. Glory to Ukraine.